Alright you guys, Bad Gamers Inc. here, and here we are sitting, staring at my hideously organized desktop covered with random crap. I, I don't recommend any of you guys ever, ever under any circumstances ever have a desktop organized this poorly. It's a really bad idea uh, just for general usability and knowing where things are. But the purpose of today's video, a quick look at Wax 2.0 and how I made our Bad Gamers Inc. video intro. So I had the video, um, it's called like new intro or something up on YouTube, and that's been up for several months. I'm not going to go ahead and check right now while I'm recording, but um, I posted a comment saying I was going to upload a how-to video. Never got around to that, but I've been getting a couple questions from friends, and so I decided to end up um, actually making that video. So that's what this is about. Um, here I have all my project files, and what I ended up doing... I'm gonna go into crap here first, and what ended up happening is I made my logo in paint.net, it's a program free to download, I'll put a link in the description, excuse me, and basically I just made my logo and it had a bunch of different layers, this is what it ended up looking like, I liked it, it turned out well, um, and then before saving that I basically separated the layers that I needed into pings, so it, as you can see reserves the background transparency, I have the bad, it's kind of a gradient background, the gamers, and the ink. And as you can see, they kind of have the cool inlays and stuff. Uh, so I have all of those organized into pings. Um, from there, I downloaded a background off of the intranets. You can just look up background video anywhere you need to. Uh, converted it to MP4, or not MP4, excuse me, AVI. .avi is the only video file type that is recognized in Wax 2.0, so make sure you convert it to AVI. Freemake, good software. I know there's a bunch of others out there, so I'm not going to recommend that to you. I trust you guys know how to find one for yourself. Came as an MPG, converted it all out, uh, downloaded a free song off of a random website uh, that had sounded good to me. Uh, also converted that to a .wav, a Windows Audio file, or something like that. Uh, that again, only audio type recognized by Wax. So got those converted, all that stuff good to go. From there, I hopped into Wax. So first of all, I added uh, this guy right here. That's our video. It's It was a lot longer, it was like 30 seconds, so I trimmed it down to 8 seconds, which ended up being my uh, time that I was working with. So we're going to make that appear again. As you can see, I didn't do anything with it. Uh, but then I added, and if we go forward in the video, you can see, that's my composition, sorry. You can see, if I can click the right thing, that these things fade in. The numbers and letters fade in while the background's constantly moving. So basically what we have there is I clicked this button to the side right there. That enabled track properties. That's what we have right there. And basically I turned, this used to be uh, a stopwatch just like that, and I clicked on it, changed it from none, to linear, so it's a smooth transition, and set the opacity at the beginning of the video, if we go back to the beginning, set to zero, and then it slides, that's the composition editor again, slides up to 100, as you can see that bad reveals. So that's what that's com controlling. Um, as you can see I also did that for, excuse me, that's the wrong thing, gamers, and ink. So that's common for all of these. Uh, also did that for the background, uh, whatever it's called. What is this? Oh, that's the circle trend. That's the thing. Circle gradient flare that I had going on. Okay, so back to the beginning of my track. Excuse the dogs barking in the background. Um, I applied a video plugin. General 3D, I don't remember where exactly, it's just in general 2D video plugins. I applied a quick 3D modifier to each of my things. And basically what this allows you to do is change a bunch of things very quickly. Very simple, we've got scale X, scale Y. Um, I'll skip through the video so you can see what this kind of controls and I have this guy hiding, so let's make that appear again. Um, boop. Click the arrow down, you can hide it, all that stuff. Fairly simple. Uh, basically what I ended up doing is, you can see how, how that does stuff. So, fairly simple there. 
Uh, what I ended up doing is I keyframed these again, and all I had to do was keyframe specific things. So like this, I keyframed... Um, we'll go right here so you can kind of see what I'm modifying. Uh, the rotate X, which as you can see pivots it on that axis, so I can have it kind of swinging up from the bottom. I have it rotate from 90 degrees, so completely on its side facing upwards to, is pointing to the left, and have it rotate out to 0 degrees, so upright. Um, then for position X and position Y, basically that just has it moving in. Um, that's actually what allows the swinging motion, so otherwise it would just be rotating. So we have a fade in, which I already explained, of rotation and a movement from left to right, that's the uh, position X modifier, and a movement from bottom to top, which is a position Y modifier. So as you can see, these just slide uh, from lower to higher along this keyframe. And I kind of applied that same concept to the other ones, but I varied it a little bit, and I need to have that clicked for all of these, because that's what allows the opacity to change, the fade in, if you will. So here we just have position Y, so if we look at, at, excuse me, this is gamers. If we look at the gamers, we can see that basically all it does is it's rotating down, basically kind of from the top, and that's going to be a rotate Z, I believe. No, that's a rotate X again, I suppose. So if we look at what that's doing, basically it's rotating about the X axis, which is the one that runs from left to right, on the sides of the screen. So as you can see, it, it kind of looks like it's rotating in front of us. Um, so that's what, hap that's what happens there. Then we have a position Y modifier. So if you look, basically I just have it moving kind of from up to bottom. So it looks like it's flipping down. And then again, it's fading in. So uh, just play with these, kind of vary them a little bit so it looks like each letter is doing something different if you're following what my intro is trying to do here. And then on ink, we'll take a look at what we did. Again, I, I did this months ago. This is literally the first time I've looked at this track in a long time. So we see keyframes again. <clears throat> Excuse me. And I did a very simple rotate X and rotate Y with this one. So if we're looking at ink, all I had going on was it looks like rotating Y with the X axis kind of rotated. It's hard to tell, but... um. It's rotating around the axis that goes from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen. So it's kind of rotating around a pole. Um, so that's what that is. And then on rotate X, or no, we actually had to rotate Z. Uh, what that is, it'll be easiest to see here, is basically it's rotating around the axis that comes straight out and runs in and out of the screen at a perpendicular angle. So that's what we're looking at there. Um, so basically, that's again combined with a fade, and when we put all of that together, uh, it looks pretty nice. After that, I just, as you can see, added some background audio, and it's very long. If I can remember the control for zoom out, seems like I can't. Um, I, again, haven't done this in forever, uh, so I don't, <laughs> I don't know many of the controls, but I do know how to do this. After that, I basically just set my workspace, and it's going to be laggy while I play this because it hasn't RAM previewed it, but I just set my workspace down to around 7 seconds. It doesn't really matter, and then after that, I just rendered it away. You have to make sure you're going to project settings, changing your frame width, height, and frame, weight, right, frame rate to the appropriate sizes. I think it defaults on a very low size, like 240p. It's not going to look good if you uh, export it like that. After that, go to options, make sure you're using some codec. I prefer the MPEG uh, done by Xvid. It's a very good AVI codec. You're able to get good quality at lower file sizes. Definitely better file sizes as compared to uncompressed. I made that mistake once. A six second video was like 100 megabytes. That's a dumb thing to do. Okay, so exported that. It looked good and I'll play you guys the final video at the end. Again, we use it on most of our videos. Uh, I got the audio from this song. Um, thank you guys for watching. And make sure you leave a like, uh, comment if you enjoyed, uh, give me some feedback, and then make sure to sub for more.